should be enough. What? <laughs> What's enough? What, what were you doing? I was making sure I have enough hope for tomorrow. Look, I've even got a backpack full. <laughs> Chris, I don't think that's really how it works. Oh, silly me. I'm supposed to eat the hope and not just put it in my pocket. Um, not quite. Well then, how do I have hope for tomorrow then? Why are you worried about having hope for tomorrow, Chris? I just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and it's kind of worrying me. No one knows what will happen tomorrow or the next day or the next week or the next month or the next year or even the next 10 years. In fact, the future is very unknown. What do you guys think might happen in the future? We often imagine that our tomorrows will be like our todays. So if today was a good day, then we often imagine that tomorrow will be a good day too. But if today was a bad day, then we often imagine that tomorrow will be a bad day too. I wonder if Chris is so worried about tomorrow because he had a bad day today. Chris. Has something happened today that has made you so worried about tomorrow? Yeah, today has been terrible. To start with, I sat down to watch some football and my favourite team lost. Then the power went out so I couldn't even watch the interviews. But I was still hopeful my day would get better. I was meeting my friends later to play football. We haven't seen each other for ages, so I was really looking forward to it. Later came and it was raining and the game got cancelled. I feel like I'm never going to see them again. This is the fifth time this has happened. Okay, I understand why you're feeling hopeless now. You think that tomorrow is going to turn out the same as today and you wanted to have hope, so to make sure that didn't happen, that's why you were trying to stuff hope into your pockets. Exactly. Well, I'm here to help. I'm sure you'll see your friends again. And in the meantime, why don't you call your friends so you can have a chat? I will do. Thanks, Jessica. I know. Let's hear if some of our friends have ever helped someone turn a bad day into a good day. I helped my partner today by explaining the fractions in math. I've helped my sister today by packing her bag for her. I helped my friend stop crying today because I gave him the ball in basketball. Today I've helped my partner in math with a tricky question. At playtime I helped my friend with because she was upset so I went to go play with her. How are you feeling now, Chris? Are you still feeling hopeless? Mm, a little bit. I still don't know if I can have hope for tomorrow. What if tomorrow is even worse? You know, this reminds me of a story in the Bible that I think might help. Two people moving and marching thinking, head scratching, about something big that's just been happening. But on the road to Emmaus from Jerusalem Way, two became three as another says, Hey, hey, says he, you've been thinking and head scratching. Has something big just been happening? <gasps> you've not heard about what's been happening? All of Jerusalem have been head scratching. What have I missed? asks the man. I'd love to know, please tell if you can. It's about a man called Jesus and we thought he was coming to rescue God's people and send the Romans off running. He did and he said loads of cool stuff from a place up north called Nazareth. He told great stories and healed the sick. He knew people by name and what made them tick. 
Oh, remember that wedding? He turned water to wine. Brought his friend back to life and his friend felt just fine. He was sharing and caring, just ask his friend Pete. He walked on the water with only his feet. He said shush to the storm and the storm was hushed. He did a miracle with bread and thousands were stuffed. Besides all this, his sermon up a hill had so many stories, super cool and brill. I can't believe it. What a big loss. A man so great who hung on a cross and on that cross, that's where he died. I feel so tied up in knots inside. And three days have passed, though it feels more like seventy, cause now we've heard that his tomb is empty. <laughs> That's right, you heard me, his body is gone. But who'd take his body? He never did wrong. You seem confused and out of the picture. So let me show you what it says in the scripture. It was always the plan, right from the start, because Jesus loved you with all of his heart. He died on the cross, but rose from the tomb. He came back to life so you can live too. And as they were moving, and still head scratching, two of them stopped, but the third kept on marching. Uh, hey, uh, don't go, please, the two say. The sun's gone to bed, so why don't you stay? Good point, says the third. Day has turned to night. I'll stop over with you two and then grab a bite. And as they sit down to eat, they close their eyes. He thanks God for the grub, then what a surprise! The two people stare and then rub their eyes. It's Jesus, not gone, but fully alive! And before they say seconds, there's more bread going round. Jesus just vanishes. He cannot be found. What a great story that was. So those two people couldn't see what was right in front of them. Jesus. That's right, Chris. They were so focused on the problems of today that they missed the hope of tomorrow. You know, sometimes we can worry so much about what we don't know that we can't see the hope that is right in front of our eyes. So we already have hope and we don't need to go looking for it. Or stuff our pockets with it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't need these anymore. Christians believe that their hope comes from God and that they don't have to worry about tomorrow because they know that whatever happens, God will be with them. So let's keep our heads up and our eyes open because tomorrow just might be a different story. Thanks for watching guys. See you all soon. Bye. See you guys.